Chapter 18, The Runaway Returns, page 1, 111. Once again the moon was full. It rode low in a clear sky, casting shadows across the snow. With slow steps, Granite traveled back down the trail, putting more distance between him and the angry pack. His heart was heavy, and his tail drooped listlessly. He no longer feared being chased, but he had no place to go. His attempt to live on his own had failed. The land he moved over was the land he had crossed with such joy beneath blazing skies only a few weeks earlier, a few weeks before. His joy had vanished, and he did not know what to do except return to Ebony's country. The wolves who hunted this land would never let him stay. Their attack had been so vicious that Granite did not even try to cross their territory to places on the other side, where the wolves might be friendly. It took him a long time to leave this unfriendly land because he moved only during the light when he knew the hostile pack would be asleep. Granite could not travel fast. His leg was stiff and his back was sore, where a patch of skin was missing at the base of his tail. The moon had crossed the sky three times since he fled, but Granite was still in dangerous territory. He pushed on. The light was fading when he caught the whisper of a familiar scent. Granite sniffed hard, then ran toward a large rock beside the trail. Eagerly he, eagerly, he drew in great gulps of the smell. It was Ebony's marker. Granite sighed with relief. His steps quickened. He was surprised that the familiar smell made him feel so good. It brought pictures of Ebony and Snowdrift and the other wolves streaming into his head. He forgot the pain caused by Strider and Romer. He forgot everything except Snowdrift's kind eyes and caressing tongue. Granite knew that the pack was nowhere near. The scent was old, so old that the moon had grown large and shrunk several times since Ebony had marked this rock. For the first time since Granite began his flight, he traveled on through the dark. Now that he was back in Ebony's territory, he was safe from the hostile wolves. Each step took him closer to Snowdrift. Even so, Granite was uneasy. He did not know what Ebony would do at his return. The pack leader had never shown him any affection. Although Ebony might let Granite follow the pack, the black wolf might not be so forgiving. He might attack the dog, as the other wolves had done. Granite was no longer a small puppy, spared to ease Snowdrift's grief. Despite his fears, Granite kept moving, searching for the pack. Each day the scent markers grew stronger. As he drew close to the pack, Granite began to travel only during the brief periods of light. He was so unsure of his reception that he did not want to meet the pack at a kill. One gray twilight, Granite came across a patch of snow covered with fresh wolf tracks. They crossed and recrossed the prints of a running moose, which kept changing direction. The sense told the dog that the entire pack had chased the moose. The hunt had not gone well. There was a trampled space where the moose had turned and fought. Then the moose tracks went in one direction and the wolf prints in the other. Darkness fell and the tracks disappeared, but Granite followed the trail with his nose. The pack had run through the forest and across a wide frozen river. As he scrambled up the bank on the far side, he picked up odors from the sleeping wolves. Yelping softly with excitement, Granite followed the scent, loping at first, then sprinting as the smell grew strong. It was not long before he saw the pack above him, curled up on a rocky promontory that was sheltered by several trees. 
Granite did not know what to do. He hesitated. The wind was blowing toward him, carrying his scent away from the pack. It would not do to blunder in among the sleeping wolves. He decided to announce his presence by howling. Before he made a sound, he sniffed deeply. To his surprise, Snowdrift was not in the pack. Without her to protect him, he was in enormous danger. Granite turned and trotted back along the trail. He had gone only a few feet before he was stopped by a howl. Someone had spotted him. He looked over his shoulder and saw Strider standing on the highest rock. The gray wolf stared at Granite, then opened his mouth wide and howled again. All the wolves were on their feet now, dark shapes against the sky. It was like 